Well, won an election, huh? Nobody won. Nobody won. <laughs> Nobody won. No one's no one's won. No one's lost. Actually, a lot of people have lost. Multi party. Yeah, but hey. They're gone burgers now. Yeah, but hey, in saying that, we have one thing to be appreciative about. What? This is the As Yet Undecided podcast with your conflicted hosts, Mike and Sophie. We are not quite as undecided <laughs> as... But at least we're not quite as undecided as Parliament's right at this moment. Yes. Everyone's just walking around with St. Peter's, apparently. Yes. But, um... Stalking them on Facebook? Maybe. <laughs> just sending them direct messages saying, Hey, uh, Labour Party... Labour Party's willing to do, do... Willing to do this and this and this if you make Jacinda Ardern the Prime Minister. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I... I heard of a few um, Facebook fake conversations. Yeah. There's like built English and the Wisdom Peters you up. <laughs> Stuff like that. So it was like kind of funny. Yeah. But, but saying that, um, we are doing this on the doing this podcast on the Tuesday after the election. Yeah. The special votes have not been counted yet, so there are no final figures as yet. Um, until October. So by the time you listen to this, um, this message will still be relevant. Yeah, it'll still be relevant. But saying that, based on the one point, the, the two point one million people that voted, which was around about the same as last election, yeah. National got the majority of the votes, got the largest percentage. Forty seven percent. Yes. However, in order to order to become the ruling party under the MMP, you have to get at least 50. You have to get a bloody majority. You can't just, you know, get 40% and still rule, you know, like, because you've described 60% of the population. Yes. Yeah. So that's how MMP works, and that makes it more representative than um, first past the post. But yeah, there's, um, there's a lot to dissect in this. Mm. There's a lot to dissect. Um... Which one would you like to talk about first, Sophie? Mm. Okay, let's go back to the um, evening. Uh, no, I'm not too sure what did I say first, but even the, everyone's talking about Winston Peters. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, and, and we'll get to Winston, but, but, but there's a lot of things that... I'm not too sure where to start first, you start. Okay. Firstly, we have to talk about... Out of this MMP, mm. this is the lowest amount of parties that has ever been in Parliament. Mm. The minor parties were just decimated. Yeah. So the five parties... Mm. What? Yeah, five parties in total. We usually get about six or seven or eight. Yeah, well, because, you know, you've got National, Labour, Greens, Greens New Zealand First, first. and Act. Four. No, five. National, Labour, Greens, Greens New Zealand mm-hmm. First, and Act. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, so there's only five parties. parties. It's usually joined by um, mm. the Māori Party. This is the first time in 12 years there's no Māori Party. Yes. And what other parties? Oh, yeah, we also had the Mana Party one time or another. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, no United Future. And no more United Future. So usually there's eight. And National Party usually forms a coalition with themselves, Māori Party, United for Future, as well as New Zealand First. That's how they won the, the previous three elections. Yeah, so it's pretty much been National yeah. and the Coattailers. Yes, but now um, for National, most of their Coattailers are gone. And Winston Peters' loyalty is a bit shaky at the yes. moment. Um, now, b- b- before we get to that, because, yeah. we, because we want to... Leave the whole Winston debate till the end. Yeah. We also have to talk about this is the lowest vote that has been discarded due to parliamentary rules. Oh yeah. At three point seven percent. Wow, that's low. Yeah. I mean, I remember last elections they had to throw away four percent of the votes just for one party. Exactly, which was the Conservative Party. Yeah, the Conservatives. Yeah, I'm so glad they're not in this time. Which got four point seven percent of the vote. Yeah, and that's like a huge amount of discarding just for one party. But here, what was the discarded votes last time? It was a, it was about eight. Eight percent. 
Now it's like lower than half. Yeah. So that's yeah. yeah, that's why National was able to get so many seats the last time because they they had sixty last time from memory. Mm. So if they only needed Act and United Future, but they put the Maui Party in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. To you know, confidence and supply. Yeah. Right. But no Maori Party this time. Yeah. But and because of that minimal discarded part of the role, mm-hmm. National needed more votes. Yeah. Which they, even though it is an increase mm-hmm. in the percentage vote, because of the low rejection, yeah, they don't have enough purely on themselves. So what happens to discarded votes? I've heard that um, all the discarded votes goes to the other parties that do manage to go in. No. Oh, well, but yeah, yeah, yeah the- theoretically, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, because like, I was trying to figure out what you meant by that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, no, Okay, this is what happens, from what I've heard. Do correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Yeah. The reason why I'm saying this out loud is to make sure that I got my conceptions correct, and you correct me, okay? You better yeah. correct me on this. Okay. So, say that um, out of all the votes at 100%, only 92% of the votes were used because 8% were discarded because all, the, all those votes went into parties that didn't go, that didn't go to the 5% fresh threshold. Yes. Therefore, with those 92%, you then do it by proportional basis. So say last time National got 60% of the 92%, therefore they get 60% of the seats. Is that how it worked? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, easy as that. Yeah. It's, MVP it's, is actually ridiculously easy if you actually break it down. Yeah, if, yeah. You, if you break it down, it's easy. Mm. But for some people, um, it's not easy enough. No. They, they you know, um, a large amount of the baby boomers want a FFP system. Yeah. But so we millennials can see the benefits of the MMP system, especially oh, after. Sorry, not yeah. FFP, FPP. Yeah. Sorry, my acronym was wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, no, yeah, but firstly, we um, no Maori Party. Mm. Now, I kind of feel. Um, before we talk about the Maori Party, yes. what do you think that was the youth millennial, the youth vote this time? How? What, what do you think the percentage was? It's uh, from what from the interim results so yeah. far. Yeah. Unchanged. However, I've heard that lots of us, the youth vote, actually voted actually registered really late so that means that a mass majority of them will be under um, a big percentage at least will be under uh, special votes could well be yeah could well be there is 300,000 of them yeah um, and, and also I have to congratulate the New Zealand public for the highest amount of advanced voting yeah by half a million that's us yeah me and Mike we voted early yeah yeah so it was 750,000 in the 2014 election. Mm-hmm. Now it was 1.25 million. Wow. A, um, a quarter million people voted the day before. Mm. Which is amazing. So just wondering. How, um, does, does advanced voting make um, the electoral, committee, electoral commission's job easier? Like can they, can they yeah. start counting before the elections? No. But does it still make it easier for them? Like, can yeah, they... yeah it, it does make it easier for them on a logistical sense. How does it make it easier for them? Because, um, y- you know, um, allocation of resources would, right. be, would be a lot easier. Okay, so they can start planning things in advance. Yeah, so like, instead of having this amount of group at this polling booth, mm-hmm. um, not knowing how many votes the votes have been cast, Yeah. All of the ballots were that were done in advance voting. Yeah. That were probably sent to the town hall. Yeah. You know, you can allocate resources to them there. Yeah. To to count it more efficiently. So it gets a better idea of say where the where the people hall need to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I voted on the second day that you can start voting, so I yeah. hope I made the job easier. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like. Like, all the votes got counted that night. That's crazy. Nothing, yeah. It, it didn't matter if you voted on the first day or the last day. It was all counted on the one go. Unless you were a special vote. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, because you have to check on the um, legalities of it. Yeah, so 2.1 million voters on the day, or no, 2.1 people were enrolled on the day of the voting, that, and you have an extra 300,000 of special votes, which no, means... No, 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 no. 2.1 million people voted in the advance voting... Advance voting and, and on, on, the election the, day. on election day. Yeah. So the special votes are the ones that are from overseas. Yeah. The ones that voted outside of the electorate. Yeah. And also who who enrolled late. Wait, um, I, I'm part of the Epsom electorate, but I voted at um, City... Oh. Okay, so wait, I voted at um, the, C- the City Central electorate, but I am Epsom. Am I special? No. So what's special then? No, voting as a no, 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 I mean, like, you have to be... Because, like, if you think about particular boundaries of your electorate, mm. they would have a contingency plan for that. Right. Like, take, for instance, if you were, vote- yeah, if you were in Auckland... Yeah. But you spent the last two weeks in Christchurch. Yeah. They would have no Auckland centric um, voting papers there. Oh, so um, so within so within a jurisdiction slash electorate, they will also have the neighbor neighboring electorates too. Yes. And if you don't have those, then uh, you you're special. For example, if you're a Christchurch person voting in Auckland. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it'll you know it'll have yeah from what I would imagine yeah the special voting would just be a blank slate. Yep. Um, I would assume that you would know which electric MP and which party you'd be voting for, mm. but the names won't be on the electorate. It'll just be the party name on both sides. I see. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, that's what I think theoretically should happen. Oh, yeah. And most, you know, most of the time, what I think um, theoretically, one, should already happen, it should exist, or that should be the way it should be going forward. Or three, they do they do have printing, print, usually have printing on site, right? Yeah, but... If they could actually, know, if you know, if they know your electorate, surely they can print it out for you. Yeah, yeah, you could, but, you know, that's expecting that... that the people are onto it. Oh, so I'm even more onto it than them. Yeah. I would actually have printing premises on, on there, you know? Yeah. Just in case that you do come from out of town and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Also, um, they could save a lot on paper. Like, instead of cutting paper around, all you need to do is cut a printer, some paper, and some inkjet, and print on the go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you, you know, the New Zealand blood service. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, they, they, they print uh, on the bar. If it were to mm-hmm. be that system. Yeah. Um, I would think laser would be the way to go. Have to be the way to go. Yeah. However, the printer will have to be both portable, affordable, and extremely reliable. Yes. You can't afford to have a printer break down in those situations. I mean, for blood ser- for blood donations, maybe they can get away with it, just typing stuff on, on electronics, but elections are far too important. Yeah, and, and there was a few things that happened during this advance voting that... Yeah. Um, we didn't know how what was going to happen. Yeah. Like a person died oh. b- between advance voting and, you know, what happened. Yeah. Um, her vote didn't count. Because she's dead? Yes. Of what? I don't know. Let's just assume old age. Maybe. But I'm just like, yeah. So, so yeah. So, if you, if you were alive... Yeah. Uh, up to the day after the election, yeah, your vote counts. Man, doesn't well, lots of people die in New Zealand on the fact that we have four point three million people. Does it mean that um, it's like they count the vote? Oh, this, then they count the vote. Oh, I've heard this person capped it, pulled it out of the pile, burned. Yeah, because <laughs> because you know they're, they're, you, you can eliminate as much as you can. Yeah. So, um, when you get your um, easy vote card yeah and you hand it into the person mm. they stamp it yeah right so that has <coughs> your electoral number I yeah mean, your electric number yeah and your ballot number yes then they bl- blank it out yeah <coughs> so they can actually 
They can actually find your vote. And they can find my vote. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, so they don't put it into piles. They put it into um, organised yeah. piles. Yes, organised piles. And um, how do they know? So is it the computer that reads it? Because um, I've, I've no. seen... Then how do I know who you are? Because they put, like, black... No, because 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 you have your your ID number on mm-hmm. the bottom right hand corner of your Easy Vote. Yeah. Thing. No, but on the voting paper itself, once they write in your ID, they put black tape over it. Yeah, but you'd have to, you know, it'll be in secret. Yeah. They'll peel the black tape and see which one it is. Peel the back. Okay, it's this guy. Put it. Put it back. Yeah. And put the put the tape back. Put it. Put the paper into the relevant pile. Yeah. So so it's an improvisation mm. of structured anonymity. I see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So how so how do they know when someone cast it on the day? Well, who knows? Maybe they just don't bother. Probably not. But you know that was a very interesting case. So. If you want to have your vote to count and you, you think you're dying, just don't tell anyone that you're dying and just don't let anyone know that you died, yeah. I suppose. Just don't let anyone know that you died. And your vote can still count. Like, just notify someone like a few days after the elections when the vote's already counted. It's too late. Yeah, but, uh, you, you know, it's, it's those sort of discussions that was really great. Yeah, it's, um, it's hilarious. <laughs> morbid. Yeah, yeah, very morbid. Been, been saying that this is this podcast is brought to you by Davis Funeral Homes. <laughs> no, 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 they didn't. <laughs> I just pulled out the I just pulled out the most convenient uh, funeral home name. Yeah. Now with polling station. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 there was a a fam- the, there was um, a Facebook post that I read from a good friend of mine. Who is a presenter for Maui Television? Yeah, and he he was talking about how to improve the youth vote. Yeah, um, and they were saying having it in youth seasons. Mm. Um, you know, and I talked about the legality of that. Um, generally, mm. it is usually housed in civil defence headquarters. Right. Of. Of the particular town, or of the particular city. Okay, so University of Auckland's a civil defence centre as well as yes. AUT. Yes. AUT is a civil defence centre. Yes. Okay. Like so, was the courthouse, and like wherever you know, in Epsom, it would be the Epsom Library, wouldn't it? Uh no, that would be the Presbyterian Church. Yeah, so that would be you know, you know it's it's generally the civil defence space of that area. So what does it mean to be a civil defence base? Um, basically, if you if you are affected by a large scale thing, if stuff hits the fan, yeah, go there. Okay. So, like for instance, I know where where I grew up. Yeah. Where the the civil defence headquarters is. Yeah. Um, and when the when the old networks couldn't light, mm-hmm. everybody went there. I think there was about 150 homes affected by the um, asbestos smoke inhalation. Really? Oh man, that's a lot of cancer. Yeah. And, and even to the fact that all of us had to write our names down mm. to the council. Yeah. So if we actually had cancer. <laughs> Do you think that asbestos inhalation affected your eye and your no, lungs? No, uh, no, 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 not so much. You're lucky. Um, well, the, well, the lungs is the whole asthma issue. Yeah. Um, but the eye thing is, yeah, it's. I put it down to the chemotherapy pills I was taking. Oh, yeah. That's what I put it down to. Yeah. Because it was a, because. <laughs> one thing you have to re- you have to think about is that chemotherapy doesn't mean cancer. No. Chemotherapy means suppression of the immune system, right, for you? High five. High five. Chemotherapy um, just means killing your cells. Or, or slowing them down. Yeah. In my case, slowing them down. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But, but nevertheless, um, in side effects, 
end up being shingles. Yes. In my eye. This was great. Due to your weakened immune system. Yeah. But in saying that, sp- speaking of um, shitty immune systems. Yeah. The Maldi party missing out. Yeah. What do you think about that? As, as, as a. Uh, no, let's go back to the youth vote. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so it's usually in civil defence centres, right? Yes. Is it possible to actually have uh, the polling station anywhere? Like, and if so, what are the prerequisites for polling station? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. That will be something to research for next time. Yes. Evidently, it has to be a public place, so you can't have it as a private property. Yes. We don't want to. We don't want it in David Seymour's place. No. That almost happened, and I cannot believe that the ACT Party headquarters was over at the Auckland Yachting Society. Goes to show how posh they are. It was kind of funny. It was hilarious. I'm like, you guys, oh my god, you guys are giving Epsom a bad name. Um, you actually had the the election night in the poshest place you could probably go to. A yachting society. Okay. okay the so Royal New Zealand Yachting Society, no less. Okay, so... We, Boating so, squadron, I mean. Yeah, so we've got to talk about this as well, because this is actually really funny. Yeah. Um, I cringed when they said that. It's like, oh my God. Because the Green Party had these at St. Matthew's. In the which, city. Which is just up the road. Very famous for being a very liberal church. They're one of the first churches to actually allow for same-sex partnerships. Yes. And, and ceremonies. They have um, lots and lots of different controversies. Um... Basically saying that Christianity should take a more liberal view. Yes. Very famous for their billboards. Yes, and what is across the road? Uh, let's see, that's the Sky City Convention Centre, otherwise known as the National Party yes. um, Conference. Again, very fitting, because of the shady deals John Key has done with Sky City yes. for their convention centre. Um, and another part that got me yeah. is that the leader of the National Party... Yes was not at the Sky City Hotel. Where was he? He was at Pullman. Which is not... Which is actually quite far away. It's 800 metres away. It's 800 metres away, which... No. Why was he over at the Pullman's instead of I don't know. partying with other people? Um, Probably because it is one of the few five-star hotels in Auckland. Sky City is not a five-star, it's four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. So close. So that's quite funny. Again, it showed um, their party values. So, oh, uh, so um, Labour was at Town Hall. Which, no, no, no. It was at Altea. Altea Centre. Yeah. Altea Centre. Um, they said Town Hall, which is next door to Altea Centre. Yeah. So it goes to show their party values. Um, Labour was at Altea Centre, which shows civic, civic value because it was right next to Town Hall. Uh, Greens was at, was at the most liberal church you can probably ever go to, yeah. just to show their um, to show their liberal views as well as their inclusivity. Yes. I mean, honestly, St. Matthews in the City even has a specific LGBT uh, service. Uh, National was at the glitziest, richest uh, com- centre they could be at, which they partially funded. Yes. And um, the ACT Party was at the the old, most old school and poshest aristocratic centre you could be at, which is otherwise known as the Royal New Zealand Yachting Squadron. Yes. I mean, they're not at all bad. They're they're the, they're the ones that they're the ones that um, Team New Zealand is a part of. And uh, where was New Zealand first? New Zealand first was I, I, at, I, at I, B&B and Russell. B and B and Russell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go show how small they are. Yeah. Uh, they're, yes, they're very very traditionally Kiwi. B and B and Russell. Uh, yeah. it, it, it was like an old yeah. Southern American style um, two story complex. I'm just trying to remember where, where that could be because I've been there a few, been to Russell a few times. Yeah. Uh, so they're like old school Kiwi. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so um, you, Ma, uh, Maori, the Maori party were to the Marae. Yeah, the, of, yeah, of the, course. Yeah, but they, they were at different Marais. They were at their own electric Marais. Well, that makes sense in the Maori party. Yeah. So that uh, I find it quite funny how Winston Peters had to cut his speech early because he had to catch a ferry. Back to Pi here. Oh, pie here. Pie here. Pie here. Pie here. Pie here. Where's pie here? Pie here is right next to Russell. Oh goodness, is that where he is that where Peters lives? No, because it's part of his electorate. Oh, I see. So he's staying there. Yeah. 
Pai here is a fury right away from Russell, right? Yeah. I think I stayed in Pai here yeah. when when where the me when my family was missing Russell. Yeah. So there's a very nice B and B there. No, very extremely nice motel over at Pai here, I believe, and it's like all eco friendly. Okay. Yeah. So it's very posh. Yeah. Yeah, but but wouldn't say it's five stars. It's like a four star thingy. Thingy. Yeah. A, a, a four star beat the thingy. Yeah, four star. Thingy, um, yeah. Like a dragon ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a dragon ball. Yeah. I don't get your reference, but yeah. <laughs> Um, I got your reference, don't worry. It's just I'm not too sure what the Dragon Ball does these days. No, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I haven't watched that show in ages. Um, yeah. And uh, once again, there were animal... What, which hashtags? Oh, yeah. Here's a very interesting rule. During the election day, you're not allowed to talk about politics on social media. You're not allowed to talk about what you voted for, and you're not allowed to um, promote more pa the parties. Basically, it's like... Election day. Stop advertising. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and, and that was brought up again last election. Yeah. Where um, two All Blacks were charged. Yeah. But they were given a warning. It's like, D guys, this rule is not that known, but just don't do it. Yeah. Don't, don't just don't do it because it is quite a minor rule and uh, it's very easily forgettable. Also, I don't think many people actually knew about it. Yeah. So, so guys, that basically on the day you. Uh, this is this is the extent you're allowed to do. You're allowed to wear your party's colours and you're allowed to have one rosette slash badge. Yes. But that's about it. Apparently it's not illegal to wear blue to wear blue on the day or red. But yeah. mind you, the safest colour still is orange. Yeah, no, and, and, and by all means, I went to the Wins office. Yeah. On Monday. Yes. Didn't see the election guy. I got pissed off. Oh man. <laughs> and I'm like. Where is the orange guy? I need to see him I, 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 and pat him on the back for a good for a job well done. Nice. But for the election guy is getting outdated. Like, he's going to probably get free scraps next elections. No, but we'll, we'll, just, we'll just be constantly evolving. Yeah. Well, I find that he's no longer relevant to the millennials. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's quite sad because I like him. Yeah. He's like he's like a Cinder Man's um, Democratic cousin. <laughs> a sense of man's democratic cousin. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, what, what's going to happen? Is the election guy got to suddenly going to have a, a beach as accent? <laughs> he, already, he already does, doesn't he? No. He's... It, it's pretty Kiwi plain. Like, m not me. No. Not you. Me. It's more like you. Yeah. Yeah. Me, it's like, my one's Kiwi littered with... British? Yes. Received pronunciation? I mean, if I ask English people English people where I'm from, they just get confused. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man, that's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a um, go-to guy for elections. And um, I've, I read this tweet one time from an American guy saying that, hey, uh, New Zealand actually has an, an election mask. It has an orange goblin for an, an election mascot. What have, what have you been hiding from you guys? And... What have you been, what have you been hiding from yeah, us? Uh, and it's and we're like and Jeremy Clemens. No, it's not Jeremy Clemens, but one Jermaine of the Clemens. Jermaine Clemens was it Jermaine Clemens? Yeah. Or one of the Concords. One of the Concords basically wrote back saying, "You have an orange goblin for president." Yeah. You've seen that. Yeah, I did. It was Jermaine. It was Jermaine Clemens. Yeah. 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 You have an orange goblin for for an, an election mascot. What have you been hiding from us? You have an orange. You have an orange goblin for a business. <laughs> That's hilarious. Pretty much. Yeah. So it was just like, oh man. Sorry, but Trump should probably lay off his um, spray tan. Yeah. It's it, getting it, obvious. And so, well, the result. What do? You, what does? What does Sophie think about the result? As yet undecided. <laughs> it's um, well, here's the thing though, right? Winston Peters isn't necessarily the kingmaker, but he's pr coming pretty damn close to becoming one because it's there's a few other possibilities. National Party just needs to um, form a coalition with one other person or party, and most of their mates are gone. It is entirely possible that they could um, form a coalition with the Labour government because they're both centres. <laughs> 
Which will never happen. That's probably won't happen. And um, uh, one even more outlandish idea was that they could probably form a coalition with the Greens Party. Yes, and from from what I hear... Yeah? Um... I mean, the, the National Labour Coalition is not as outlandish as you might think. They're both centre. Cent, what, a national centre right and Labour's centre left. Yeah, but you, but you need to understand what happens within the, con- the constituency. Say that word for me, please. Constituency? Yes. Um, for, for the Green Party to get approved yeah. to go with either party, yes. they need an 80% majority. From the party vote. Oh, from, from, from their party faithful. From their party faithful. Yeah. Okay, so that basically rules out national. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that this morning. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this is going. I mean, this is going to be hard. This is going, then people are going to have a hard time negotiating because it's like uh, there's like ten deals going on at the same time. Yes. And no, not ten, but you know, I'm kind of exaggerating. But let's just say multiple deals going at the same yeah. time. So, so it is a catalog. Yeah. It's a catalog of deals. Catalog of deals. Yeah. There's quite a few permutations. So currently, the two. The two of the most likely permutations are either National and New Zealand First, yeah. or a New Zealand First, Labour, Greens. Yeah. Yeah. And, but then again, you also have the National Labour and. National Labour? Yeah, the National Labour, which has never happened because they're like the. They're like the Capulets and the Montagues. They have a feud going on for no apparent reason. They think they're very different from each other, but they're actually the same. Yeah. They're very, they're much more similar than they think they are. And the thing is, it could take the hatred of Winston Peters plus the death of two uh, family members, yes. and they could probably form a government. Yeah. Yeah. But right at this moment, um, their, their theme song may as well be um, Dance of the Knights. Yes. You heard of that one? What about dancing with wolves? Dances with wolves? No, dance, no, not dances with wolves. Dance, the the knights dance. Do 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 do. No, that's Pe- no, 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 that's Peter and the wolf. No, what was the? Um, no, no, but, but I mean, I da, mean, no, wait a minute, stop. Can be. I'm just trying to remember. Sorry. It's like. Dun 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 da da. Oh my goodness, I can't remember the tune. But it's okay. I, I, da, 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 no, I can't. I won't even bother. I'll link it. I'll link it. It's more like the a battle of the knights. Yeah, but but I was, I was more talking about the Kevin Costner playing Winston Peters in the film Dance of the Wolves. Really? No, I mean sarcastic. <laughs> but, but Kevin Costner was in the Oscar-winning film of 1992, Dance of the Wolves. Wasn't Kevin Costner a wrestler? No. What's he? Like, we haven't heard his name before. He is an actor. Yeah. Um, Tim Cup? No. No? Um, oh, he's been in a lot of movies. It's like a poor man's Harrison Ford. Right. Why poor man's? Oh, well, if, well, if your salary isn't big enough for Harrison Ford. Yeah, you go then, to the Cosner. Oh man, I'm just trying to remember that song I was trying to remember. About the the tune from the night starts or something rather. Never mind, I'll, I'll link it. I should stop worrying. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I would have liked to go to... So which coalition would you prefer? Hey, 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 let me finish, let me finish. Okay. I would like to go to one of those electoral parties. Yeah? The last time I checked... Oh well, it was also funny yeah? that... The Nationals one had an open bar. Yes. The Labour's one did not. National Party's got more money to spend. I know, but it was just funny. Yeah. So anyway, um, when it comes to the parties, parties, are you allowed to just go in? No. Do you have to register? You need to be a member. Oh, right. Which means donating money to the party. I, I see. And considering that I am as yet undecided every time I vote. Yeah. I'm like... Yeah. Meh. Yeah. So, um, 
I also find it quite interesting that it's now tradition to actually give the media corps money. Like, um, as the media corps just basically <laughs> scrums around your house, you're supposed to give them food now. Oh, uh, yeah, that's always been a thing. That's all, for how long? That, that's always been a thing. That's always been a Labour thing. Yeah, but National's been doing it. Like, um, John Key's given out pizza, and now Bill English is like, what did he give out last? What did he give out? <laughs> I don't know what he gave out, but I hope it wasn't for spaghetti pizza. No. We as Labour this time, uh, Jacinda Ardern's partner was literally cooking sausages in front of the journalist and saying, hey, do you want one? Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and um, part, part way through, he's like, oh, yeah, we're at, Jacinda's like, all right, guys, we're out of tomato sauce. Yeah. Throw me a bottle. It was so <laughs> funny that, yeah. we, like, there, were, there was a whole bunch of kids yeah. in Point Chev. Yes. Outside of their place at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, and I, I was saying to myself, why aren't you in bed? Well, they're not in bed <laughs> because they, their parents are trying to instill a sense of democratic pride into them. So they'll vote in the future. No, 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 no. I think that, that, that is total BS. That is total BS. Well, that's what I like to think. Why do you yeah. think they were out at, out at 10 o'clock in the evening? Oh, because they want to go to the kids at school on Monday saying that, look at me, I was on TV. Oh. <laughs> Does that make more logical sense? Look at me, I'm famous. Uh, and, and, like, when, when Arnold said her speech, yeah, there were two words added out from someone in the crowd. Yeah? I knew who it was. Who? <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was. Was it your half of me, uncle? No, 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 no. It was a, it was a lady that I that I watch on Snapchat, and she she said during Arden's speech, "Yes, Queen." And <laughs> I knew who it was. I knew who it was straight away. Oh no! And I'm like, and, and like just to reconfirm, yeah, she, she posted on her Snapchat, and I'm just like, oh, oh, you evil little thing. Oh, I'm like, this is this this is classic. Yeah. This is, oh. I mean. If I did that, everyone would know it was me because I have such a distinctive accent. It's just everyone recognizes me by my accent now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Man, that would be so. That was hilarious if she did that. Yeah. Yes, your match. Even though you didn't win. Even though nobody won. Yeah, nobody won. Nobody won. Uh, As a stalemate of a race. Yeah, and then if it was the rugby term, I, I don't like this rugby term. It annoys the hell out of me. What is it? You, you know, if, if if there was a draw happening in rugby, yeah, every time every coach says always like kissing your sister. Why? And that makes no sense. It's like oh, that makes no we no sense. Oh yeah, it's like um, well, kissing your like kissing someone you love is supposed to be really nice, right? But if it's kissing your sister, it's like it's not so nice anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, but why say that? It's, Kind of uh, puts me off lunch. Yeah, exactly. It puts you off lunch. Yeah. So why say it? That's like the time we sent, sent a gif from I Don't Know Street Fighter or something, and it's like one of the gorier deaths. Like you, someone spins a katana and somehow that slices somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. <laughs> hey, hey, this was a private messenger chat between me, between yourself and I. Yeah. <laughs> And, and like you were saying that I was a blind man with a, a, a blind assassin. No, you said you were the blind assassin. Yes. And it's and then you and afterwards I and I sent a gif of a ninja chopping bamboo rice and you decided to send a gif of a ninja using a katana to basically slice somebody's slice somebody's body like a real life C, CT scan. Yeah. And I was like, I was about to have lunch. I didn't feel like having lunch anymore. So you basically can see the brain, then you see the throat, then you can see the organs. Yeah. And it's like, why did you do that, Mike? Why? I mean, it, what, everyone everyone in that chat, no, it wasn't to me, by the way, it was to the As The Other Side um, pub quiz group. Everyone in that chat was over 18. Yeah. Granted. But it was... Some people didn't have lunch. Some people were supposed to have food at that time, like... Some people had lunch by then. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. D d d you know. You shouldn't. You shouldn't post gory details between the out until after ten o'clock. You shouldn't post gory details. No. You, I mean, you should only post gory details between the hours of ten to twelve, and from two, 
and from two till five, and then maybe from seven till midnight. Okay. That is when people won't get disgusted. That's when people won't throw up or stop eating. Well, you shouldn't post gory gifts around lunch around meal times. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm sorry, but because of yeah humor, yes, humor always crosses a boundary. I know it's not funny. It's not funny unless it offends somebody. I've also I've heard. Therefore, you may as well just offend yourself. I do that every day. Yeah. Self depreciation for the win. Yeah, self deprecation. My type of humor. Yeah. Self depreciation. I always said self depreciation, not self deprecation. Anyway, um, yeah. Please know, guys. Just tip. Please don't post anything bloody or gory or otherwise off putting during meal times. No, but I'm saying free speech. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying free speech. I'm saying save the food. You don't want people to start. You don't want people to start vomiting all of a sudden, right? Tell them to stick the food in the fridge and have it later. But, but <laughs> what if you already had the food? What you mean? Are you supposed to eat your own vomit afterwards? Are you saying that? No, no. There's going to be no food in your system to throw up if you didn't eat. No, what if you already ate? You posted it that has, at one fifty. Most people have finished at lunch by then. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. That person did not post that they just had lunch on Facebook. Oh. So how was I supposed to know? <laughs> anyway, it's it's anyway. Don't don't worry too much about it. Yes, of course. <laughs> don't worry. I was try. I was doing using the joke too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, just be considerate of other people's stomachs when you post um, gory, gory things, please. Anyway, back to Winston Peters. Yes, yes back, back to the winners and losers. But only winners, Winston Peters. Yes. Um, as I would go back to the Māori Party, can I go back to the Māori Party? Yes, you may. Back to the Marae. Yes. Labour won every Māori seat. Mm-hmm. So the discussion has come to fruition. Yeah. Should the Maori seats be abolished? Yeah. Was Winston Peters wants to do that? Yes. But no, no, he wants a referendum for that. Oh, I see. Right. Um, it, a lot of people have claimed to say that it is racist. Yeah. Having Maori seats is racist. Which I, as a sociologist... Yeah. Are going to say that that they them saying that mm. makes them racist. Two. Yeah. Because, it's positive discrimination, isn't it? Well, yeah, because like the the reason what the uh, the like I think we talked about this in the podcast. Yeah. The originality of the Maori seats mm. was we didn't like voting. Yeah. Right. But we what what we did is that we did we did our own. Mouldy Parliament within the area, right? So we use the discussion of the people to the chiefs, yeah, and then all of the chiefs would decide who the MP was, right? Right. So you guys had your own system of dem- democracy. Yeah, and, and, and you know the the areas dedicated to that that that's been there since you know. It was pretty much in there since the, you know, 19th century. Yeah. Nothing much has changed. King's Country. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah the whole Tainui argument. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, now, I, like, I, I, I'm going to say that the reason why Maori seats exist yeah. on a theoretical standpoint yeah. is... Because of the constant oppression that Maori people had in yeah. New Zealand society, so um, Don Brash's notion of a Chinese electorate, yeah, has no bearing. No, because we Chinese people are more powerful than the Maori people. Yes. Yeah. So that's the re- yeah, so that's the reason the current argument is now to keep the Maori seats because Maori are still being oppressed now. 
if it is language, yeah. if it is um, a decreased uh, tertiary education, yeah. decreased wages, increased prison population, da di da 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 racism, and, and the list goes on. Yeah, I mean, racism is very hard to get rid of. Yes. So, yeah, it's just the same as gender equality. Yeah, sexism is hard to get rid of too. Exactly. It's, it's immensely frustrating. Yes. So, it was, yeah, so, it, hey, it was even, was it um, Women's Suffrage Day last week? Yeah, just before the elections. Yes. But I, I, I called it something else because it is also a day of something else. Um, Pirate Day. Pirate Day. So I speak. Like, yeah, 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 Lassie's vault. Yeah, or was I like to call it a winch, but never mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I kind of felt sorry for Flannel. He was very emotional when he lost. Yeah. Um, walking out of interviews and all that. It was just the whole fact that he just spent so much time. But because of... Who did, who did Flavel lose to? Coffee. Yeah, the weather guy. Weather guy. Yeah. So I guess um, Coffee can predict what the constituency wants. <laughs> with a 70% accuracy. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but I think the bad thing was... They they didn't they had nothing to improve Maori with. Mm. Yes, they did their photo order system and um, the United Nations of Indigenous People and stuff like that. Yeah. But the majority of Maori them just says you're not doing it enough. Right. And in regards to the referendum. Yeah. My thing would be. My stipulation, yeah, would be only people on the Maori roll can vote vote on it. That would be a really good idea. Yeah, that would be my because only stipulation. Yeah, because it's only the Mo because this is about the Maori roll. Therefore, only people on the Maori roll should vote because it only affects them. Yes, and also it should be the people who are in the Maori roll as as this election. Hmm. Not when the referendum is happened. But what about young kids? Like, what if you're 17 and the referendum happens when you're 18? That is a different argument. Yeah. But you know what? You know why I'm saying that argument? No. Really? Well, let, let's assume that a million and a half people will change from the general role to the Maori role just to vote against it. How could they do? Th so, I assume that if you have Māori ancestry, you want to get onto the Māori role already. No, anyone can can change. To the Māori role? Yes. I thought you need to have actual Māori ancestry to nope. do that? Nope. Actually, let's change it then. It also be on the Māori role, in time for the referendum, you have to show you, you're at least one sixteenth Māori. You actually have to be Māori. Yeah. I, I, because what if you're like a 17 year old kid, Maori kid, and 18 at by the time of a referendum and you want to vote? So, yeah. But you're going to have the same argument as well. Yeah. You're going to have that same argument. Where are people who are from the general, they want to abolish Maori seats, yeah. switching over just because they don't want the Maori seats anymore. What if. Okay, here's another rule then. If you were on the gen if you were on the general, you can't switch over to Maori for the time of elections. Yep. If, however, you were registering to go to an election and you, and you can prove that a you have Maori ancestry and b this is like your first time registering and you've never been on the general role before, then you can go to the Maori role in time for the referendum. We just did our own coalition uh, coalition compromise. <laughs> Bingo. Because mm. because you know yeah. Now you realise why I said what I said. Yeah, I just realised it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why sometimes talking is more more effective than arguing. Yeah. Yeah. I can see where you're coming from, and I can I can dip. I why did I assume that to be on the Maori roll you have to be a Maori? No. That would be that would be really stupid otherwise. Yeah. 
it, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 as long as you you want to be entrenched in Maori politics, by all means, join the Maori role. Yeah. And by the way, Maori politics is actually very. It's another beast in and of itself. If you think, yeah, yeah it's especially with the especially with the Kingi kind of movement. Yeah. That's another discussion. Possibly for another podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I need to do some more research on it. I mean, I've done a Kingy Town movement back in year 13. Yeah, but that's... Uh... But, uh, yeah, I mean, granted, I had a Māori teacher. Yeah. But I, it takes more than a year to learn, to, to be taught that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I know the majority of the story. Yeah. And but again, I think we need to do some research, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah... And we're going to call it there. Yes, yeah, so well, this has been the As The Under Sun podcast, Election Trilogy Part 3. Yes, the return the return of the caucus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the return of the coalition. Yeah, yeah. Either or. Yeah. So we still haven't yet, we haven't decided on the name yet, so it's either the return of the caucus slash coalition. And it's like, oh, here, yeah, how can we, okay. If you want to berate us for making any mistakes, we can be found on as the other side of the <laughs> podcast at gmail.com or if you have personal attacks to myself. No. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> we are also at AYU Podcast. We are also at AYU Podcast. But if you do indeed have personal attacks on Mike, he can be found on The Minus T H E M A I N U S. And unfortunately, if you go onto my um, social media channels, Sophie nine seven oh nine, all haters will be blocked. Or you, you can comment on the Instagram. <laughs> oh, please don't! Russian Sophie has no idea what's going on in in New Zealand politics. <laughs> please don't attack Russian Sophie thinking it's me. Oh, and have a good week. <laughs> well, at least we upheld democracy, people. Uh, not so much. No. Oh. <laughs> How do I stop this? How do I stop this? You click it, then you move it. <laughs>